Welcome to the channel, everyone. This is Dermatology X. It's a new channel uh, dedicated to giving some approaches and information on dermatology topics, which can be useful for those who are doing the dermatology residency or doing USMLE, or those who have just an interest in skin, hair, and nails overall. For the inaugural video of this channel, we're talking about a topic which um, can be quite tricky studying during dermatology training. Just some disclaimers, this video is for entertainment purposes only. It's not medical advice. I didn't invent or discover any of this. And you have to assume that anything on any of these slides can be wrong. And I hope we have a bit of fun being entertained and studying this interesting dermatology topic. So first of all, I want to go through the different types of cutaneous T cell lymphomas. In general, in my mind, I like to split them up into two broad categories. The not so aggressive ones, or otherwise indolent, and the more aggressive forms of cutaneous T cell lymphomas. In terms of the not so aggressive ones, these are your mycosis fungoides, as a classic type MF, and its variants. There's another subgroup, which are the CD30 plus lymphoproliferative CTCLs. And then there's the others, such as subcutaneous paniculitis-like T-cell lymphoma and primary cutaneous CD4 plus T-cell lymphoma. And in the, in the second broad category, which are the more aggressive types of um, CTCL, there's Cesare syndrome, and then various forms of uh, adult T cell lymphoma, extranodal natural killer cell or T cell lymphoma. Then there's the primary cutaneous CD8 plus aggressive, gamma delta T cell lymphoma, as well as peripheral um, T cell lymphoma. So I think of that as two broad groups. Probably the two main ones to know that come up in uh, exams and things like that most often would be mycosis fungoides and, and cesare syndrome followed by the cd30 plus group so those are probably the ones you may consider focusing your efforts on during your reading this is a uh, table um that got from uh, google images which uh, just demonstrate these broad categories again as you can see mf CD30 plus lymphoproliferative disease um, as two broad groups under the not so aggressive ones and uh, under aggressive most common would be Cesare syndrome. As I alluded to earlier about 65% of all CTCL uh, is comprised of MF and Cesare syndrome. Under CD30 plus lymphoproliferative CTCL there's there's two key ones to know, primary cutaneous anaplastic large cell lymphoma and lymphomatoid papulosis. So when, you, when should you suspect CTCL? Well, it is in the differential for anyone who comes in with a red scaly rash, particularly those who are erythrodermic or involving a large surface area of the body. It can often be misdiagnosed or not diagnosed for quite a long time, misdiagnosed as other dermatitis, such as eczema, psoriasis. Um, and often the initial biopsies may not actually um, necessarily show the classic features of, of MF. Um, and secondly, it may come up in a biopsy report or in your interpretation of the biopsy report. So it is the most common form of CTCL, um, often in ages 50s and 60s. More common in males, twice as common compared to females. Can have a long clinical course, misdiagnosed often as eczema and psoriasis. And comes in three key um, forms. So a patch, which can then become thick and develop into plaques and then develop into tumors. And 
In terms of the patches, often erythematous, atrophic, can have poikiloderma. Classically, these areas of involvement occur in sun protected sites um, rather than necessarily sun exposed sites. Can come in, in, in different morphologies, can be annular, polycyclic, horseshoe shaped. And for the most part, um, MF presents in patch and plaque stages. Here are some photos from Google Images which demonstrate some clinical findings of mycosis fungoides. So as you can see, erythematous patches and plaques, often in sun exposed sites, such as the, the torso here, the chest, the back. You can see here, often see cigarette paper sign, which is this wrinkling of the skin here. The more images here. In terms of evaluation, course got to start off with a, a good history and examination and suspect or have at least ctcl on your differentials list you'd like to confirm the diagnosis by a biopsy blood testing should be performed including a full blood count with blood film examination electrolytes renal function liver function uh, can consider testing for prognostic markers such as LDH, beta-2 microglobulin, and HTVL, which can be associated with Cesare syndrome. Consider doing a lymph node biopsy if there's involvement there. For higher stage um, MF, consider doing a CT of the chest, abdomen, pelvis to look for other organ involvement. And for higher stage MF, these patients um, should be co-managed with hematology, considering bone marrow biopsy as well, if appropriate. In terms of the biopsy sample, it's, it, it's important to keep in mind that the initial biopsies may not be diagnostic. And if the condition doesn't improve, um, may require multiple biopsies if it wasn't part of your initial diagnosis. Uh, immunophenotyping and flow cytometry to look for loss of T-cell markers, particularly CD2, 3, 5, and 7, which supports this diagnosis. And also performing T-cell receptor uh, T-cell gene rearrangement studies, looking for monoclonality, which again supports diagnosis of um, MF or Cesare syndrome. Having the same clones in the blood and skin is a poor prognostic marker. But it's important to not rely on this alone in your diagnosis, as there are several other things which can also have monoclonality. These include clonal dermatitis, pityriasis, lichenoides, um, the acute form, lichen planus, lichen sclerosis, and pseudolymphomas. What do you expect to see on histology? So these are the classic findings. You see a superficial band of atypical lymphocytes, which are, have a cerebriform appearance. You see epidermotropism, which is basically these atypical lymphocytes, which are spreading into the epidermis where they shouldn't be. You see patrios microabscesses, which are these nests of these atypical lymphocytes in the epidermis. In the tumor stage form of MF, the whole epidermis is involved, potentially. And immunotyping can demonstrate CD3 and CD4 positivity. Here's a picture from Google Images which shows some of these histological findings. So patrios, microabscesses here, a bit of spongiosis in the epidermis. Um, nuclear pleomorphism, nuclear contour irregularity, and epidermotropism. In terms of survival, basically the worst of stage, or the higher the stage, the poorer the prognosis is. In terms of the staging, there's basically four stages. So stage one, which can be split into A and B. So 1A is when less than 10% of the body surface area is involved and it's still a patch or plaque. 
Stage 1B is greater than 10% of the body surface area involved. Stage 2A is a patch or plaque, which can be greater than 10%, with palpable lymph nodes, but no histological involvement. Stage 2B is tumor stage, so no longer a patch or plaque, but it may or may not have node involvement. In stage 3, you get erythroderma, with or without palpable nodes. In stage four, you basically have histological involvement of the nodes. In 4B, you have visceral involvement. So in terms of staging, the higher the involvement, the lower the survival rate. Associations of MF include Hodgkin's lymphoma, as well as lymphomatoid papulosis. Differentials to consider, as alluded to earlier, can often be initially mistaken for eczema psoriasis. Got to consider all forms of dermatitis, or e eczema rather, atopic dermatitis, irritant, contact. That's why it's important to take a good history because it can help elucidate between the differentials. Pteroriasis rubra pilaris can look like this a fungal a severe fungal infection, drug reaction, parasoriasis, and other forms of CTSCL can mimic MF and Cesare syndrome. In terms of the treatment ladder, again, treatments can vary from country to country and jurisdiction, so this is just a broad overview of what's been reported in the literature for treatment options for early stage MF, so topical corticosteroids, intralesional steroids, topical nitrogen mustard, and topical retinoids. And then there's light-based therapies, including UVB phototherapy and PUVA. Then there's radiotherapy and total skin electron beam therapy. In terms of later stage treatment, this should be done in combination with the hematology team using a combination of modalities, including light therapy with interferon or retinoids orally, extracorporeal photophoresis, methotrexate, chemotherapy, stem cell transplant, and biologics, such as alemtuzumab, which is a CD52, an anti-CD52 biologic. Now, just a quick touch on MF variants. So I showed you previously classic images of MF, but MF can come in various different forms. As you see here from this article, you have bullous, hyperpigmented, ichthyosiform, MF involving the palms and, and soles, PPD-like MF, papular, poikilodermis, psoriasiform, postular, solitary, syringotropic. In the textbooks, the three most common ones described are folicotropic, pagetoid reticulosis and granulomatous slack skin. The folliculotropic form of MF has the worst prognosis. And just a few brief slides on Cesare syndrome. It comprises the classic triad of erythroderma, generalized lymph adenopathy, as well as Cesare cells. Above a certain threshold, this can be in the blood, it's great, greater than 1,000 cells per microliter, as well as in the lymph nodes and in the skin. Cesare syndrome is very itchy. They have a T-cell clone, clonality, with a ratio of CD4 to CD8 greater than 10, as well as expression of pan T-cell antigens. Mostly present in adults, it comprises less than 5% of CTCLs, has a very poor prognosis. As mentioned earlier at the start, it falls under the aggressive group of CTCL. Some other features of, of this group of patients include alopecia, palmar plantar hyperkeratosis, as well as anicodystrophy or nail dystrophy. In terms of treatment options, broadly similar to MF, however, given that it is more aggressive and poor prognosis, generally speaking, systemic 
directed therapy is required. This includes chemotherapy, such as the CHOP regimen, stem cell transplant, um, extracorporeal corporeal photophoresis, interferon gamma, methotrexate, and various other described therapies have been used as well, including vorinostat and low-dose alemtuzumab. So that comes to the end of this presentation. Thank you for listening. Comments, feedback, and suggestions for future changes and future topics are more than welcome. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you.